This skill has the potential to save someone's life. and welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to another episode of the clinical skills series. My name is Zara and I'm a registered nurse working here in the UK. In this channel you'll find me making a whole bunch of videos related to nursing life here in the UK, student nursing videos and more recently my clinical skills series videos as well. So what is the clinical skills series? Well I'm glad you asked. The clinical skills series is a series of videos focusing on clinical nursing skills that you will commonly find yourself using out on placements or out in practice. The most important aspect and also my favourite part is the patient scenario section. These are designed so you can apply the skill that we are going through today to an actual patient scenario and hopefully by the end of the video feel more confident in carrying out the skill. Today's clinical skill is blood glucose monitoring and the escalation of care when we receive an abnormal blood glucose result. This skill has the potential to save someone's life. If this skill is not carried out or if it is done incorrectly, it can lead to all sorts of complications which we do not want at all. This is why I feel very strongly about highlighting this skill and including it in the series. So let's get started. Blood glucose monitoring, also known as capillary blood glucose monitoring, also known as CBG monitoring, forms and as how the body is controlling blood glucose metabolism in the body and the effect of medications. Our bodies regulate blood glucose levels by producing insulin. To obtain readings of our blood glucose levels, samples are taken from the capillary, venous or arterial route. Blood glucose monitoring is an important aspect of providing safe care to our patients, especially for our diabetic patients. The specific time or testing frequency is individual to a patient. If a monitoring should occur according to the patient's medication regime and also the clinical situation that the patient is currently in. Typically, blood glucose levels should be maintained between 4 to 7 millimoles or 4 to 8 millimoles. Typically, we would associate hyperglycemia with a level above 7 millimoles, and likewise, we would associate hypoglycemia with levels below 4 millimoles. Now, remember, all of the information that I'm sharing is a concise format of the skill, but with whatever skill you carry out, it must always be done in line with evidence based practice and your local policy guidelines. Very important to raise. So when would you actually be using this skill? You'll typically be taking blood glucose monitoring on a routine basis for patients with type 1 and type 2 diabetes, enteral and parenteral feeding, liver disease or pancreatitis, sepsis, and also a routine check for preoperative patients who are being prepped for surgery carry out blood glucose monitoring, you will need the following. Test strips, and you need to use a new test strip every time you obtain a new reading. Test meter to put your test strip in, and that is where the results of your blood glucose levels will appear for your patient. Clean gauze, wherever you're taking your skin sample from, it needs to be clean and dry. A lancet, also known as the finger pricking device. And of course, you need your patient record so you can identify the correct patient when you go to obtain your reading. Now, for the best part, let's now set the scene and actually put blood glucose monitoring and the escalation of care when looking after a patient with an abnormal result to a patient scenario. Let's meet our patient. You have been looking after 25 year old Lisa Summerfield, a young lady who has got a history of type 1 diabetes. Lisa was feeling very unwell at home and following a home visit from her general practice, she was admitted to hospital on an acute medical ward. Her vital signs upon admission were the following. In the last 24 hours, Lisa has experienced four episodes of vomiting and is experiencing severe abdominal pain. She has not been able to tolerate any food or any fluid and is also complaining of a dry mouth sensation. You are the nurse and you are now concerned for your patient. At this point, you decide to carry out a blood glucose reading for Lisa. Your blood glucose results have confirmed that her current levels are 30.7. You know your patient is very unwell. So at 
this point, you would use an SBAR assessment and hand over this information to the medical team who are under Lisa's care. Hello doctor, my name is Staff Nurse Zara, calling from Ward X. I am very concerned about my patient, Lisa Summerfield, in bed 17. Her latest blood glucose results is 30.7. She is type 1 diabetic. Currently, she is alert and orientated, but reports fatigue. Her heart rate is 105 beats per minute and respiratory rate of 26 breaths per minute. She has had four episodes of sickness and is now expressing severe abdominal pain with a pain score of 8 out of 10. I am very concerned. Can you please come and see her now? I have in fact done a video on how to carry out an SBAR assessment which you can check as part of my clinical skills series playlist. After you have escalated this information to the relevant medical team, the following investigations were carried out. A chest x-ray, urinalysis and an arterial blood gas reading. Here is the result from each of the investigations. Chest x-ray revealed no obvious abnormalities. The urinalysis was positive for ketones, glucose with evidence of a possible infection and the ABG reveals evidence of acidosis. This is not a good situation, but by escalating the care for your patient when you identified an abnormal result, the team were able to identify that Lisa is showing features associated with diabetic ketoacidosis, including hyperglycemia, ketonemia and acidosis. So well done. A skill which takes less than five minutes to carry out has the potential to save someone's life. And this is why nurses play such an important role in the management of our care for patients and in the escalation of care as well when we see something that doesn't look quite so right. If you enjoyed this video be sure to press that like button and leave some comments down below and be sure to check out the other videos that I've done part of the clinical skills series. I will see you guys in my next video. Take care and stay safe. It takes time, it takes practice. Hopefully by the end of this video, you will get more confident in giving an SBAR handover. This is where you've got to be a bit assertive. There are tools like SBAR in place to help us as nurses when it comes to looking after our patients. Mrs. Jones is a 65 year old lady who was admitted into hospital six days ago following a road traffic